What's going on? I'm Mike Catholic, Taylor Kyle's here for CLN this video on the Gillette Stadium game field as the Patriots just lost to the Seattle Seahawks 23 220 here uh, for week two. They are now one and one as they head into a short week against the New York Jets. Lose 23 20, Taylor, and a lot of storylines in this game. Defensive backfield wasn't great. Patriots' run defense was really good. Geno Smith threw us to 300 yards and a touchdown. A couple blown coverages on the defense side of the football. But I think one of the main focuses and one of the things we really need to look at moving forward with this Patriots team is, is this passing attack enough? Jacoby Brissett only throws for 127 yards today. Hunter Henry, your leading receiver with 100, 109 yards, but wide receivers only have three catches on the day. Jalen Polk with two, uh, KJ Osborne with one. So first and foremost, what do you think is the overarching problem with this passing attack? Why can't they get it going downfield? And why are they so stagnant when, when they need to you know, make a play and go get a pass? So one thing that is notable is Jacoby Brissett mentioned that the Seahawks did a great job taking away their shot plays, touched on the fact that the Seahawks are playing a lot of two deep zones. I understand that that can make it difficult, and maybe we'll see in their game plan on Thursday against the Jets, maybe they capitalize on that and say, okay, if you want to play too high, we're going to attack the deep middle as opposed to trying to go outside, which is where Jacoby Brissett typically likes a lot of his downfield throws. But at the same time, after watching last week, it's hard to believe that there were no opportunities downfield, and this is also a passing attack and a coaching staff that told us this week multiple people Gerard Mayo hit on it Alex Van Pelt hit on it Tyler Hughes hit on it that there were open receivers and they wanted to get Jalen Polk and Demario Douglas more involved so sure maybe you know you're not throwing fades to those guys or throwing them passes down the seam but you can still create more touches in one way or another especially for a guy like Demario Douglas who's so dynamic after the catch for him to have no touches in this game for me is unacceptable that falls on game planning, in my opinion. I do think the Seahawks obviously deserve credit. This is one of the best secondaries they're going to face all season, and we knew that, but we also said that they needed to play complementary football. Doesn't mean that Jacoby Brissett needed to pass for 250 yards, but two weeks in a row where you pass for less than 130 is not going to get it done most of the time in the NFL. At the same time, you know, I don't want to get too off topic, but the pass defense basically gifted the Seahawks two touchdowns. That needs to be taken into account because the I think we all know this Patriots passing offense won't be the reason that they win but at the same time you got to see more production and even Hunter Henry a lot of his production came on things that were off script or even the play that was leak where he was supposed to kind of be late and go upfield he ended up barely getting the ball because Jacoby Brissett was pressured when Layden Robinson couldn't get outside on his pull to set the edge so a lot of shakiness from this passing offense I'm not confident it's going to get better uh, with less than a week to go and they're facing another great secondary in the Jets but obviously the tape will tell all but I just find it very hard to believe there weren't more opportunities for this passing game to get started. Let's talk about that pressure you just that pressure you just mentioned and I want to actually reiterate and correct myself Jacoby did have 149 yards passing but regardless still under 150 both games still not good enough you mentioned the pressure though Patriots rushing attack still pretty good today 185 yards on the ground averaging more than five uh, five yards a carry but the pass uh, the pass protection not great Jacoby Brissett running for his life back there having to uh, make plays with his legs trying to dump the ball off to Hunter Henry things like that and he's also sacked three times so uh, as we know Chuk Sikorafor leaves the team but Darian Lowe gets hurt today with a knee injury does not return how do they fix this offensive line uh, that's struggling so much in the passing game and not allowing them to put their best foot forward there? One thing, hopefully, Vidarian Lowe, apparently he had an IV in the locker room, so hopefully maybe it was cramping, not something that's going to be long-term because obviously he already had an oblique injury. You don't want to see him get any more hurt long-term than necessary. You don't want anybody getting hurt, period. But the bottom line is the protection was an issue. For the second week in a row, pressure rate is probably going to be around 50% again. Pressure to sack rate because of Jacoby Brissett, not as high. He did a great job maneuvering the pocket, buying time, and creating plays off script, but you can't live this way. And the pass protection, it was a little bit of everything. Mike and Wendy was a guy that you expect to have clean days. I saw him lose at least two or three times in pretty rough fashion. Layden Robinson loses a rep where the, the Patriots get sacked, and it kind of knocked them out right before they missed a field goal. And then at left tackle, Vidarian Lowe might get some crap for allowing the sack early on, but that was really because Michael Jordan was trying to help him, ended up pushing Boye Mafi around him, which allowed him to chase down Jacoby Brissett. And then Michael Jordan also losing on a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Leonard Williams. Really on that one, I think the biggest issue was you can't get in obvious passing situations. We did see this Patriots offense kind of get behind the eight ball on third downs, which is never going to help you 
you against a scheme that's very similar to theirs in terms of you don't know who's coming. There's so many things they can do to confuse you. I thought Jacoby Brissett, from what we could see live, did about as much as he could. But at the same time, when we look at the tape, we may see that there were guys open downfield when he did have time. But whether it was the receivers or the offensive line, not good enough on either facet. We need to see some kind of improvement from those units. I was going to say, I guess we can try and squeeze Drake May into this conversation if we have to. Uh, because, again, how much of this was on the quarterback? I thought Jacoby looked good today. He, he, made, a, he made something out of nothing, nothing more often than not here, um, running around for his life, getting hit, getting back up. He looks like a warrior out here, but could Drake May have made any more of a difference today? How much do you think is on the quarterback? I know we'll get into it more when you look at the film and we kind of break it down further, but did you see any mishaps, uh, bad plays, bad decisions from Jacoby Brissett today, and what can improve from him? There were a couple times, honestly, where he threw it away, and I was like, you are getting dangerously yeah. close to throwing this to a defender who could pick it off. I want that cleaned up. But last week, we got on him for the missed throws, right? There were three, two or three uh, throws that were not even catchable, and you're saying, Jacoby, some of those, you know, you got to take the little layups. I didn't see any of those kind of misses this week. I want to give him credit there. And I don't think there was a single play, again, other than some of the shakier throwaways, where I was like, Jacoby, you're hurting this team, man. What are you doing? For the most part, it felt like he just wasn't able to get into any kind of groove or from play to play, it was either pressure or maybe guys weren't open well enough. So I don't really want to put this game on Jacoby quite yet. Could Drake may have maybe made some more downfield throws, tested tighter windows, been able to make some bigger plays with his legs because he's a better athlete? Yeah, probably. But I also wouldn't have wanted to see Jacoby Brissett, or Drake May have to deal with the pressure that we saw with Jacoby Brissett, where obviously Drake May is also pretty good at avoiding pressure, but he's not as good as Jacoby Brissett. I think his pressure to sack weight was one of the higher ones in uh, college football last season, an area where he's going to need to improve as a pro. And bottom line, you don't want to put Drake May out here prematurely. Maybe he's not doing well enough behind the scenes. Regardless of that, you can't put him behind this offensive line. I have been on the record as saying I think he can make the offensive line look better than it is. But right now, when you have City so out, like Vidarian Lowe in and out of the lineup, Layden Robinson still trying to figure it out as a rookie, it's a difficult spot to put any quarterback behind. I don't want to see Drake May uh, playing anytime soon, or at least until we see more stability from this passing offense, specifically up front. Patriots lose 23-220 to the Seattle Seahawks out here at Gillette Stadium today. Quick week, quick turnaround here. The Patriots end up uh, playing Thursday night against the New York Jets at, like, at MetLife Stadium. Myself and Taylor will be there, so make sure you check us out here on Patriots Press Pass for all of our coverage and read all of our written work at clnsmedia.com. Support us and sign up at Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash clns or download the app today and use code clns and get $50 instantly when you play $5.